Hi, welcome to webinar 24. Um, today we're going to keep it pretty laid back with some questions and answers that we either got from the CS team or people submitted themselves. Um, generally, we like to keep these pretty straightforward. That way people could get their answers quickly and also for our team members to be able to have this as a video reference in case uh, customers in the future want a future, you know, a resource of some sort in video format. These are very helpful for us too because it helps us explore the questions a bit more in depth um, because if we notice an uptick in the same question being asked it lets us know where some clarity could be provided in that instance so hopefully this is useful to you guys we could start with the first question which the first set of questions will be provided from our cs team but we have been getting an influx of uh, questions regarding the video content that we had in the last webinar and so customers asked you know can i use your video on youtube to show to my customers they really enjoyed uh, webinar 23 or it was a youtube premiere rather but it was still useful to them so re regarding video content and all that. One of the things that we do offer now is um, video content that you could request at the behest of uh, CS team. So just, you know, contact us on our contact page or our live chat that we offer and we could provide you some video content. Say you want to show a canvas being printed or you want to see someone stretching the canvas or you're looking for something in particular that you saw in the video from last week, then you can go ahead and ask for that and we'll provide the raw footage of it. So you guys should have that available to you. So hopefully that helps. And I know that some people love to have that kind of content on their stores. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy that resource. As for the next question, um, now this is more of a, it, it really depends on the customer type of question, but I kind of want to break it down to kind of help uh, if you're in the in-between trying to make that decision, but it's, uh, should I do a manual or automatic processing with LumaPrints? So what automatic or manual processing is, at least for LumaPrints, is whether or not you want to integrate your store and then process the orders there uh, manually or automatically. That is, you get each order, you submit it yourself, that's manual or automatic where um, after the first time that you process an order, it's going to start going through straight and you don't have to worry about it. All that would need to be kept up to date is a wallet to have the sufficient funds for that process to go through. But I just wanted to also kind of visualize some of the other factors that you could take into consideration. So let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. So the main difference uh, things you should consider when it comes to manual versus automatic, um, as uh, previously stated, it depends on, you know, yourself as a customer, but here is what we generally kind of establish between the two. For manual, we tend to suggest this or we tend to lean towards this if you're just a new store owner, you're starting out, you're still understanding the ropes of everything as a store owner online at least. The manual process will help you understand how products and shipping works. It'll help you uh, figure out what your customers are ordering. And overall, it just gives you some learning knowledge of how things work when it comes to drop shipping. As for, you know, in terms of the amount of orders you get, if you're getting, say, a couple or a handful a day or, you know, a couple dozen each week, um, manual is still a viable option because it's still something that is feasible to do. You know, take a 30 minutes out of your day at most and run some orders through your store. Again, doing a manual order in and of itself on LumaPrints doesn't take that much time. Um, once you're well familiar with the interface, it shouldn't take no more than I would say um, three minutes per order if that um, once you're well established and knowing how your orders work you could then from there consider whether or not you want to switch over to automatic especially as the orders start to grow um, another consideration for manual is if you want to do custom prints custom prints is something that is either you know you offer to your customers or it's a commission-based type of situation. I know for Etsy sellers and for other sellers, it's the same idea of like selling them Christmas gifts or personalized items that people, you know, are like, can you have this printed or photoshopped in a specific way for the holidays or for gift giving? That whole realm in terms of custom prints, manual is a great option because then you upload each image individually because they're unique to the customer. Um, and 
even again, that process is still relatively quickly. It's relatively quick, I mean. So I think that manual tends to be the most efficient for customers to do custom prints. Keep that in mind. Um, and lastly, if you'd rather not pay the fee for ShipStation, and that is what requires of the integration process for you, kind of as a quick reminder, uh, we do direct integration with, um, I believe currently it's Shopify, Etsy, and newly established uh, WooCommerce, I believe. I could be corrected, but we do some API direct integration with a couple platforms, but not for all of them. So if you happen to run a store in a e-commerce platform that is not direct integration and needs ShipStation for the, um, for the integration process, I know that some customers uh, are still new and they don't want to use ShipStation because there is a fee that comes along with it. Um, manual processing does the same thing as an it helps you um, create orders and send them out to your customers just fine. So manual is a very viable option, especially if you're trying to save money in that regard. And now kind of moving on to automatic, um, this is definitely for those who need help with um, sorting out their orders and um, have something that just runs in the background while they're working on other stuff. Um, People who have been running stores for a while probably would opt for automatic only because you kind of know how shipping and handling and processing works, where you kind of know where when to add things to your wallet or when to, you know, offer something in your store and, you know, have it processed through Luma Prints quickly, um, especially if you're receiving a lot of orders within the day or the week or the month. Um, it could get kind of uh, tedious to constantly be doing the manual process of doing each order. So if you're high volume uh, or you're been in uh, on an e-commerce platform for a long time and you kind of know how it works, automatic is a great option. Also, if you have uh, multiple stores or different product variations, that is, you know, you might have different prints here in one section and different prints in another store, or you're offering, you know, the same design in uh, different product forms, uh, it could get really confusing really fast if you're always doing manual processing. Um, automatic, you know, things, canvas prints, paper art prints um, and all that will process automatically and you don't have to worry too much about which products will and will not go through because again, you establish which uh, products will process and which ones won't. Overall, automatic is for those who kind of have a better knowledge of how stores, online stores work. And also if you carry a lot of orders or a lot of products, um, but that's kind of an, overarching idea. Of course, if you still need more help on whether you want to go with manual or automatic, it's always worth starting off manual. And if you feel like you do need more help or you need, you know, the store to run on its own by itself per se, then that's where you can make the decision whether or not you want to go into automatic. But starting out, even just signing up with Luma Prints, manual is always a good tester to kind of feel the waters of how you feel about manual versus automatic. Okay. And then for our next question, um, people have been asking what is the most popular size for canvas prints? And so this is a question we get often. And, you know, this is more of um, an input from us as long established uh, canvas sellers. They kind of want to know from us, you know, what sizes work, what sizes sell more. And to be honest, you know, we, have a visuals of what that is, um, but it really does depend on the art. It's very subjective to how you sell your products and I guess the way you want to go about it. Uh, but we do love sharing um, kind of the more common sizes that are ordered from us and also um, just sizes that tend to make sense in a person's home because, um, you know, when someone buys art from your store, they're buying art, you know, not in and of itself, but they're buying art to accompany the rest of their home and their other artworks that they have in their um, living room, in their bedroom or what have you. And so being a bit more knowledgeable about the more common sizes that you'll see in, um, you know, retail stores or amongst other artists is always good. So let me go ahead and just share another visual of what the common sizes are. And this was a previous, uh, oh, 
thing that we made where uh, people just wanted to know how you know the common sizes work and um, we kind of think about it more so less about sizes and more about ratios and so the ratio is like the uh, you know the factor between the length and the width um, and so here we're going to have um, different types of ratios so one to one length by height um, or length by width rather um, three uh, three twos four threes, two ones. And so squares, rectangles, and panoramics are generally uh, sorted like this. And of course, another uh, panoramic would be the one third or three ones. But these, for the most part, are very common in households. And we tend to see this being ordered more frequently. Um, other types of sizes kind of get uh, wonky. And not that to say they won't sell or you can't sell them. But if you are looking for something that is more confined or more uh, geared towards what we not only see in you know people's homes, but what we also see in stores, these are the sizes to go for. For example, if you sell fine art paper prints, some people would prefer to frame them when they receive them from um, you know the mail. So if they want to frame it, having a common size is very useful because then at that point they don't have to cut the image, they don't have to do anything, they could just insert the image into their frame because what we would have is these established sizes that then they could find the framing for in all stores. Um, but generally you could utilize these sizes and this kind of breakdown of ratios to then um, see if you want to offer a small, medium, and large size of your paper print. For example, if you have a square paper art print, a small could look like a 12 by 12, whereas a medium could look like a 20 by 20 or a 30 by 30, and then a large could be a 40 by 40. That's just one example of many. Um, again, it's about whether or not you want to offer multiple sizes, um, whether or not you want to offer um, a few or many. It's really up to you. But these are the recommended sizes we tend to see that work best in homes. And even within retail, this these are kind of the sizes you'll tend to see for the most part. And um, feel free to take a screenshot of this, kind of have it as a note for when you're considering what sizes you want to provide in your store in the future. But hopefully this breaks it down well enough for you so you can kind of understand how that works. And then um, moving on to our fourth question, um, this is very relative to the time of the season, which is um, what is the cutoff day for orders um, so they arrive before or on Christmas? And so as you guys know, Christmas is coming up, the holidays, um, we all know shipping can become uh, really hectic as there's a high influx of orders going all around. So for us, what we like to do is tell our customers how to prepare for that and how to take things into consideration, especially if you want to also share this and relay this with your own customers and let them know how they can also prepare for gift giving and for ordering. Um, so just to let you know, December 14th would be the last day for regular production. Um, if you want to do spend a little couple dollars, you can get next day production and you could have your last day for December 15th. So December 15th on a Friday, um, with next day production would work if you wanted to arrive before or on Christmas. And then lastly, um, December 17th would be uh, something you consider, but it would have to be same day production. And then for same day production, consider that you need to have, and also next day production, it would have to be before, I believe, 9 a.m. for you to put in the order and for it to be considered next day or same day uh, production. I think that would just be for same day production. Sorry. Um, but again, the holidays are coming up. There's going to be a high influx of orders. And whereas we can handle that influx of orders, it's really the shipping carriers that are really stressed um, in terms of the capacity and things moving around. So taking those into consideration, um, just order way in ahead in advance and your customers and you should be receiving your prints just, uh, just fine. And then we do have some questions that I did get submitted from some customers. And this was through the Google form. So thank you guys for utilizing the Google forms. It's always nice to see what you guys are asking and it lets us also have some things prepared for you to demonstrate in these webinars um, beforehand. 
Um, but a customer asked, um, do you sell small sample packs of your different papers? And so there are two ways um, we uh, share samples. I know that for some customers, they just want to consider the paper type um, and they just want to look at the texture and just make a decision from there. And I know sometimes it's hard just based off of the image to see which one would work for your prints. Um, so if uh, it wasn't mentioned before, but we do have paper samples here in house at Luma Prince's Anaheim location. And they kind of look like this, as you can see, um, archival, semi-glossy, cold press, and then a hot press. These um, small paper samples, we tend to hand out to people who do come visit and want to take some home. Um, but of course, if you're a customer that lives far away and you can't really come to our facilities, then you're more than welcome to ask the CS team if um, they, we could send some small paper samples to you. If you're just looking for the actual texture of the paper itself and you're okay with receiving something that is like this, which is a small sample with the label on it, um, again, it's just a small sampler. Now, if you want to look at something that has your art on it, then that's a different matter, in which case you can connect with our CS team again as well and ask for a sample and we'll coordinate here at Luma Prints to make sure you get a sample with your art prints on it for a little to no cost. So I don't think you should worry too much about it. We're very open to letting people kind of see the product and let the product speak for itself, whether or not you want to go with Luma Prints or if you're looking for um, different, uh, you know, paper types and trying to figure out which one is the best one. Again, feel free to message us and we'll provide the samples for you. And then another question was, do you have suggested shipping rates uh, that we can use for shipping to customers? Um, this is a question we get often. And just for you know some clarity, we do have a shipping calculator on our website. All you have to do is sign in and it will be available on your dashboard. And in your dashboard, it will be under tools and shipping calculator should be there. Um, and I do have a couple examples to kind of show you how to utilize the uh, shipping uh, calculator. So give me one moment. Here's the shipping calculator. Uh, here are some screenshots from it. And what I wanted to accomplish with these screenshots was kind of just to show you um, what different destinations might look like and why it's, um, you know, recommended that you look at different postal codes just to kind of gauge of how much you want to charge for shipping. Um, regard or how much you want to uh, add into the cost for your customer. So here I utilized a New York zip code and I also utilized a rural zip code. As you can see, there's different costs up and down and there's even different shipping carriers that are recommended for the um, lowest price. So these are two uh, different zip codes. Again, one is rural and one is far, but not so rural. and what you want to do with this is kind of gauge an average between the two. And then from there, you can decide whether or not you want to include part of it into your um, product cost and then offer a flat fee. Or if you want to include the whole shipping um, cost and put it into your product cost and then offer free shipping or offer a small shipping flat rate just to accommodate for any um, influxes. Um, as you can see, the cheapest for the New York location is going to be $10.63, whereas the one that's based in Tennessee is going to be about $14.90. And so, again, these are two considerations. The difference between the two isn't so high, but it really does depend on also the size of your product and how much, how big it is and how heavy it is. There's several factors to take that into consideration. That's why it's always good to kind of, you know, open up the calculator, toggle around with different sizes that you'll provide. Um, and then feel free to utilize these zip codes that I have here on the screen, which is um, 10016 and 37888. Um, one is more local, uh, you know, based in the city, it's still kind of expensive because it's far away. And then the other one is a considered a rural zip code. So these are all uh, things to consider when it comes to your shipping calculator and also how much you want to provide for your customer. Um, the reason why we don't provide like a set ground of like 
um, you know, charge this to your customer. And um, we don't offer like a very simplified format of that is because we're always trying to get the best deal for you. And sometimes, as we all know, shipping does have its influxes and does have its changes. And we like showing customers kind of like a live feed of that of some sort. So the shipping calculator is offering the best shipping rates that one can offer um, in conjunction with also providing products at the best price we can offer. So all of this is to for your benefit for the most part. And we look to having this kind of uh, resource for you more readily available. So the shipping calculator, again, just log in and it should be under tools. So just a couple clicks away. Also, as a general guideline, um, about 15 to 20% of shipments that we see uh, are in the rural area. Um, so in case you wanted to do the math to see like, okay, uh, between a, sort of a standard shipment and a rural shipment, then how much should I wait for each? That's some rough guidelines for you. All right. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, great considerations to also take into. Um, as for the next question, um, which papers do you suggest for digital art? Um, this is a very interesting question. Um, we did get this a couple times, and um, I'm glad that the customer brought this up. So um, I kind of wanted to break it down, another visual, but uh, hopefully you could take this into uh, consideration, and you can also see um, kind of the differences and nuances when you know people want to learn more about what to offer. Um, and how to best uh, suit their art style. And so here I have some artwork from our very talented in-house artists. Um, and I kind of wanted to just break down also, you know, stylistically, which ones do best with what. That isn't to say that you can't have one art form on one that isn't, uh, you know, shown here. It's more so what we tend to see works really well together. Um, and so as we know with digital art, digital art is a very broad uh, broad genre or a broad format. And people do a lot of things with digital art. And so I kind of broke it down to three general uh, genres or three general styles, but I know that there's more outside of these. So this is just kind of hopefully a broad overarching idea. So hopefully this answers your question. But for illustrative and defined line art, that is art that has defined lines, um, clear color gradations, and it's pretty solid in a lot of aspects. Here um, for this one, I chose one of our artists' art pieces, um, one that had, you know, for the most part, solid colors and, you know, some texturizing, but not enough where it's, you know, changing the look and feel of the art piece. Um, and in which case, this art piece, I think, would do really well on archival matte and semi-glossy. And this could also be accounted for when it comes to typography as well. As we know, typography usually has really defined lines. And um, what you want to do is you don't want to obstruct the, um, the lines with texture too much. So rather, archival and semi-glossy are really great formats for it because they're Actually, both relatively so, smooth. Yeah, just to chime in, I think for... Uh, flat line art with you know, huge swaths of solid color, or in the cases of uh, topography where there's large swaths of white in the background. As Lindsay mentioned, having a smooth matte paper would be good for that. So uh, the two papers that qualified under that would be uh, the archival matte paper. And uh, in addition to that, the um, hot press paper. Um, having a sheen or a gloss on top of a lot like big swaths of white actually can be a little bit glary uh, so using glossy papers or semi-gloss papers actually uh, may not be the best type of application for that um so again for the first for illustrative defined line art or topography or anything with like big solid swaths of color um archival matte paper and hot press uh would be the best applications for paper for those. Yeah, I'll be sure to include hot press into this uh, post production. But um, again, some considerations for you guys. Um, I would also um, include uh, semi glossy for some pieces, but as Matt, uh, sorry, as Ken stated, it really does depend on the image. If there's big swatches of black, or um, 
if there's pieces of the art piece you don't want obstructed by light, then you know semi glossy might not be the best. Um, moving on to more painterly and notable brush strokes, there's a lot of um, paper types that would um, work well with this type. Um, but here are some recommended ones, which is the archival mat, heart press, and cold press. Um, again, this is for the painterly styles where you see a lot of brush strokes. It mimics that uh, style of traditional art pieces. And so I know some people do do digital art on, and it looks traditional. So here's this for your consideration. Um, then moving on to watercolor or softer illustrations where there tends to be no defined lines or it's not, you know, uh, that heavy with line art. Um, I would consider this, you know, more alongside the watercolor-esque type style. Then you could definitely see it working well with archival, hot press, and cold press. Um, again, overarching themes, if you want to ask further questions, or if you just want to see samples of this type of style, you're more than welcome to ask for your one piece of art onto multiple types of papers, and then from there you can make your decision. And then kind of relative to that as well, um, moving on to the next question was, do you offer any discounts for artists who want to order samples with their own art on the prints? Um, going back to the initial question stated from customers, yes, you're more than welcome to um, have samples um, of your art onto paper prints and even on small canvas prints if um, requested. We do offer those to our customers because we know sometimes you need to see it in person to really understand how you want your image portrayed. Um, so that's one of the things we do provide. Um, but in conclusion, um, we're here to help in a lot of aspects. We're also here to make sure that you feel comfortable in making your decision when it comes to choosing your product. Um, for next week, we won't have a webinar as it will be Thanksgiving. Um, happy holidays for everyone who will be, you know, having attending a Thanksgiving party or festivities. Um, we will be resuming back to our regular uh, schedule the week after. Um, just let you know that we won't have one next week. So keep that in mind. Um, we will upload these videos onto YouTube. So if you want to see this post because you want to check out a previous slide or if there was something you wanted to see again, we always upload these on YouTube. And if you're looking for that link, um, we always have them available in the webinar uh, newsletters. So if you receive those, fantastic. You just have to scroll down and we do offer um, previous webinar, the previous week's webinar. And also at the top, we offer a landing page where you could see all our webinars in the past. If you don't receive the newsletters, then feel free to contact us and ask us to be joined onto the newsletter. I know that some people accidentally unsubscribe or they want to be resubscribed or they never got subscribed um, initially. So just let us know if you want to be reintroduced into the newsletter. We do um, bring people back in if requested. Um, but that's about it. So thank you guys for attending and I'll see you not next week, but the week after.